Ball play Open Cup semi-final Ukraine versus South Korea. The winner of Group A versus the runner-up of Group B. It is Foggy versus Focus. The second place of GCS Winter 2017 versus the uh, third place of GCS 2017. So this is the World Elite here at Bolt Play Open Cup. The winning percentage for Focus seems to be very good. 63% it is exactly the same uh, win rate that he has against Night Elf in general. For Foggy it's slightly different. Almost 60% versus Org and only 37% versus Focus. But if you look at the numbers apart from that, very equal. Both are very good against their respective races. Uh, Foggy is at the moment the 7th best player in the world. Focus is the 8th best player in the world. And so... We can look forward to a very, very close best of three. I would love to show you the game, but it has a, it has a pause by Foggy at the moment. Is the t-shirt merch that you sell? Not yet, but we will do it next year, I guess. Just have to figure out the licenses and stuff. So, with that being said, it is time for Warcraft. Competitive Warcraft in 2017, still rocking, still alive, and it's Focus versus Foggy. Map number one, as you can see, it's the semi-final, it's best of three, the grand final will be best of five. We start in Amazonia with Focus in the upper right, going for an Alta, Orkboro, and Barrack. So no Fastio Wyvern strategy that we saw a lot yesterday, and Foggy on the other side with the Alta of Veldus Engine of War right next to the laboratory, and of course the Moon will. I wonder how aggressive he's gonna be. Foggy, uh, Foggy will definitely dictate the pace of the game in the early minutes, um, or the until the middle of tier two, until there's Ensnare and Spirit Link, and then it turns around a little, and Focus has time to do damage to his opponent until Master is there, and then again it's Foggy's uh, time to put the pedal to the metal and dictate the game on Amazonia. Quite big, uh, qu uh, not quite big, but open. It's a very small map, but it has a lot of open space, which in general favors the Orcs, since the Raiders have a better grip on the Talents. But on the other side, if you can lure your opponents into chokes like this, then it's going to be amazing. That's like the best fighting position that Foggy can take on this map. For focus, it would be like here, I guess, in front of the expansion. That's Hopefully really good for him. So Foggy scouts that. this, sees or will see that there's a Blade Master. He can hide his Wisp already to later staff onto it. That's of course a spot that Focus cannot attack from or with melee and of course his early uh, forces will only be melee. So Foggy has a little vision, sees that Focus is going for the normal renegade creep and starts his creeping himself. He didn't deny any creeps. This ha happens uh, less often recently. They actually put some work into it and that's level 2. That is evasion. Gloves of haste and mental of intelligence. Definitely not the best items that he was looking for, but he's faster on level 2 and circled for the blade master. That's nice. One burrow attack as it oftentimes is the case plus the shop is there. So not a super fast tech for Focus as he went shop before tech, but still very very good. Demon Hunter gets another circle here and the dust. So the archers can be revealed, the Blade Master is revealed. Oh, actually he missed it! <laughs> so he has no idea that the Blade Master is here. He is quite hurt. Otherwise he could have uh, cancelled the heal self. And he goes in already. No blocker there. Oh my god, what a mistake by Focus! This is not supposed to happen. He can cancel the burrows. The grunt was supposed to be here to block the entrance. But look at the damage of the Demon Hunter. It's kind of easy for him to take out this burrow. It has to be cancelled. If he gets the second one, this is disastrous for Focus. But he wants to run out. He doesn't want to sacrifice his town portal for the second burrow. But there's Windwalk as well. Full health Blade Master. The Frog is coming in for the block. Oh, backstab. This is so lucky by Fo uh, Foggy that he survives this. And what a start to map number one here in the bolt play open cup immediate action immediate impact foggy loses a lot of moon juice is back to full health and plays it a little safer not going for this camp here where there's the goblin uh, taskmaster but decides to go for the murlocs instead so more careful since this demon hunter is hurt and his moon well is uh, empty 
I think it's a very smart choice to do that. Focus on the other side, trying to get more items from this Berserker. He has a very nice second item from Slippers of Agility. Basically the best drop you can get in the early game. This will result in critical strike for him, but Foggy is taking the other one, also hoping for agility. There we go. Cloak of Shadows, though, can be super annoying if he attacks during nighttime or harasses you during nighttime. Because then dust is required. And the Watchief Rich Creep route again pays off. Grunt is harassing against the shop, of course, not enough damage. Tier 2 is almost finished. Same for Focus. Both on very equal speed. This is a foggy trademark to go for a one move well tag. Now Mass Repair against the shop, which works. Yes, he doesn't have enough damage, does he? He can't build the engines of wind now. Now the Demon Hunter is coming in. And he sends another Wisp in, and that is enough repair. Also enough health from the moon to distract the blade master and keeping the shop alive with the staff of preservation beast master is out obviously right from the tavern where the archer was standing the entire time since the quill beast in not moving in the wisp he doesn't have a telly staff so focuses uh, foggy's early mid game is a little delayed not super aggressive and this is nice by uh, focus he knows how aggressive Foggy is usually, so he just plants the beastery and is kind of well protected with his grunt. The heroes cannot enter if he does it correctly. No, he can't. So, I think this beastery is safe. Uh, look at the damage the Demon Hunter takes. With two slippers of agility, this is an insane Blade Master already on level 2. Kills the grunt though. I didn't expect that to happen. Definitely another mistake by Focus. It's the second one in this game. Players forces are under attack. And Demon Hunter is level 3. Quite tanky. Engines of Winter coming up. He's opening up the base a little bit. And he's on the way to tier 3. This is of course something the Orc doesn't need. As he's fine with Raider Walker. The Quilby's find the Spirit Lodge. And of course now it's super exposed. Especially once the first Raiders are out. He can e uh, not, oh, not the first Raiders. But uh, the Tinker is out with the Pocket Factory. He can easily take up the production building but first he has to take care of his beastmaster who found a replenishment potion level one and a half but the blade master is not following him as he has no wind walk anymore no matter uh, <laughs> the chieftain doesn't uh, supply the aura but he kills the archer anyway so it's one archer against one grunt of course still a better trade for foxster and here comes the spirit walkers and raiders and it's an upgrade already in the works and that's that means that there was an harass by Foggy. It didn't work as planned. He killed a burrow, but or he delayed a burrow, but he didn't cancel the buildings and he didn't throw back focus that. His levels are not that high. Just the beginning at level 2, so he might have a little problem here and there. Especially with the TC crawling to level 3, but there's still big spots left. There's the mercenary camps, there's the shops, there's the natural expansion, and the remaining uh, forces at the laboratory as well. Both three very equally, I'd say. With a big difference that the Murlocs have already been taken out. And the Demon Hunter is level 3, level 2 for the Beastmaster. And Foggy is not gathering his troops in his base, but rather uses them to creep ping as well. With Fury Fire, of course, it speeds up everything. While the TC is going for the Taskmaster. Another quite a big spot here with level 5 and Bash and everything. Plus the consumables that we find. Nice scouting from Foggy with this Hawk. Torque Intelligence and Wen of Illusion. We know that Foggy is kind of afraid of this item. Especially if you like duplicate engine uh, uh, raiders that's nice master upgrade is coming raider and walker upgrade are Players both are finished i attack. guess no no walker upgrade yet engine of war in position to prove the natural but immediately taken out by focus you can eat all the trees in the world but without repair you can't withstand this this spell upgrade only coming now it's not too late though Master upgrade, you can see it in comparison, is later, so dispel before uh, Cyclone, that's always a good thing. Of course, the walkers are out, or the two walkers are out to gather some mana, which is absolutely necessary. Use Spirit Link already, so he needs more mana for the dispel. 38 versus 46, but production will start heavily for Foggy once this upgrade is a finished, and he has double Engine of Wind to produce his talents, and they are so fast in production that he can easily go up to 50. 
Level 3 on the Blade Master. He's still soaking up the experience here, though, for the Chieftain, who's not level 3. He's hoping for Boots of Keltalas. That would be insane. Like, plus 12 agility. No, plus 14 agility with the circlet would just be nuts. It's a Lionheart of Stormwind, though, which is an absolute bullshit item for basically everything. But I love what Focus is doing. Multitasking, creeping, plus harassing. Wants to keep Foggy stuck at 45. Mass and Snit all on cooldown now, but therefore no repair. And Foggy is supply stuck. Very, very good solution in my point of view, or from my point of view. To buy some more time, he has to go back all the way to Creepers Natural though. Not even a detonate. Foggy not on top of his game as it seems. First heal scroll, first invul potion for the Korean. On the other side we see the Tinker and a heal potion. It's kind of becoming a trademark for Foggy to pull all the Wisp for the detonate against the Spirit uh, Link. Focus already pulling Peons. But he lacks the level 2 Shockwave. And now it's all about the fighting position. Where can Foggy take a fight? On narrow positions, obviously, but there's nothing remotely close to a narrow position. Now maybe this one here. That would be good, and that would be the best, I guess. Or the second best, apart from this. The Engine of War is gone, cannot participate in the fight anymore. No level 3 Beastmaster, but that is uh, okay, I guess. Fairy Dragon's coming already, 46 supply. Foggy got his move back and <laughs> counter ward immediately dewarded. So that was quite a waste. Let me position it here. And the Tinker is not doing anything against this Lodge, which presents itself on a silver platter. With magic damage, it takes a while to take down buildings, but as I said, with the Tinker, with Pocket Factory, with the Clockwork Goblins, that is uh, kind of easy to do. Invul Potion and Heal Scroll for Foggy now as well. Tinker brings more Heal Potions. Wow, that's a lot of Heal Potions. He wants to keep his heroes alive. Only one invul, only one heal scroll, and that could become a good position, but no. The Raiders find a lot of talents here. Pocket Factory in a good position, though. Can't really be attacked, because that, that will result in a lot of summons, but the Beastmaster doesn't have a potion. The Tinker is all of them, and the Beastmaster falls with the heal scroll on him. This is not looking good. No summons and no tank anymore. Where was the town portal? Didn't even use it. No step of preservation. That was on the Beastmaster. So that's definitely a, pro a problem. Foggy is uh, in trouble. The raiders are breaking through everything and kill one raider after another. The uh, Demon Hunter can't really do anything against it. The walkers, though, getting attacked. The Fury Dragons, not a real threat in that form anymore. Finally, the Pocket Factory is down, but you see level 2 already for him. But it's 45 against 35. The next hero focus with another heal potion being used. But it's still a surround. This brave little peon closing the surround together with the Pocket Factory. Uh, Blade, uh, Blade Master is now down to earth, but Cyclone again. The TC has to be careful a little bit. There's no potions or anything anymore. Raiders are falling. TC is in trouble. But Focus is lucky that Foggy is not uh, focusing correct. This Raider is doing so much damage despite being almost dead. Invo Potion on the Demon. Raiders are falling. Six supply down. And the next ones will follow as well. But he only has his heroes left. Where is the Beastmaster? He's not coming back yet. He's not even producing him. He has to get the, tink, uh, the, the TC there. Level up. Level 2 evasion. So important now as he is encircled. Everybody is hitting on him. But this is the end for the Demon. And that should be the end for Foggy. On AZ as well. As he is uh, on 40 supply. The Tinker alone. What can he do? He doesn't have a disable and he was on the TC. Will survive. Now the next Entner goes into the Tinker. The Blade Master cannot be cycled anymore. Another potion being used at the second one of the Tinker. But no. Critical Strike is way too strong. And he gets it. Level 4 on the TC. GG by Foggy. And the first map win. After 13 minutes and almost 6 uh, 7 seconds. For... Focus, who takes the lead here. Almost a comeback, but that is, like, oftentimes the case in this matchup. As it is uh, the rubber band that snaps back once the spirit link wears off. So... Twisted Meadows is obviously the second map. That is no, it should not be a surprise to anyone.
And that was a fun start into this tournament. Very action-packed game on AZ. Twisted Meadows, always up for surprises. We don't really know what Foggy will play here. It's not that easy to play as Night Elf on Twisted against Orc. It's basically the same as on Amazonia. Uh, lots of open space, lots to creep for Orc as well. And I have to do tickering for read more a little, so that might take some time. Or it's already finished. I hope Liquipedia is up to date. And so far, I don't see it yet, but I hope you will take care. Second map, as I said, is TM. And without further ado, we start this. Oh, actually, I have to do some production. Focus with the lead. Can get the revenge for yesterday, where Foggy was beating his ass in the Back to Warcraft Cup. There we go. <laughs> Platon has resub, but uh, messed up the notification. I will read it for you, no problem. Uh, in any case, thanks for the entertainment back to Warcraft and happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too, man. I hope you have some good time with your family and friends. But yeah, the Ukrainian with his back against the wall. If he loses TM as well, then he is out of ball play cup, will finish third and fourth and will only get home with 25 bucks. He wants the big 100 though, as much as a Jara Cup win this is. Demon Hunter for a start. What a, uh, yeah, what a surprising element as well as the Blade Master. Again, no Keeper of the Grove, no Farseer, no Beast Master first. Seems to be a tried and true first heroes. But Foggy is not planting an Engine of War and experienced Warcraft observers know what that means. It's a Huntress build that is fairly common on Twisted, it was, this was the way that Night Elves played it for such a long time. Until, like, some players, I don't want to say revolutionized it, but mixed it up a little. Um, playing Dryads, playing Bears, whatever. So, what will he do with it? There's plenty of options. He actually has no money for, he, okay, he used it already. I thought he had no money for an engine of war, but of course he has. Mm. With Huntress, you can go for a tower push, you can go for uh, talent still, and you can go for dryads and bears. A player's so, big variety on the tech tree afterwards. Seems like a bit of a waste to go for talent, because then you wouldn't need the Huntress Hall in the tech tree. But Huntress are still quite good, especially on this map to creep. And the bouncing laves are never wrong against Orc. Tier 2 tech by focus, one borrow tech. Despite this being TM, despite there being so many creep spots, still going for this one. Of course, this tech will be so much faster than Foggy's now. Reveal being used. This time he hits him. And so he knows where the Blade Master is going. Focus not on the upper left, where he would usually go for the Rock Golem creep that we all know by now. That Lin invented. Over a year ago, man. Time flies by. But I like what the Blade Master is doing. Keeping the Demon Hunter away from his base. Uh, he can't really creep anyway at this point with only one grunt, so... Why not distract? And Foggy is taking as well. Let's see how fast it is. Yeah, quite a big advantage. But the Hunter's Hall is already there, and he's fast expanding again. He doesn't have a single unit on the field, but he's expanding over it. And the Demon Hunter is harassing. Didn't get a stab, so if you get... Oh, he can't be trapped here. Blade Master is creeping the rest of the Warlord. Quite greedy. But he got the first Trapper as well. So this camp seems to be belonging to him here. Hurt peons are moved into the burrow to be safe and do some damage against the Demon Hunter. But he has to micro against this. Nicely done. And I wonder how fast Focus will respond and with what. Usually, of course, uh, Raider Walker is a no-brainer. You could go double Beastery Raiders, or you could go Wyvern. Against Huntress, I think it's definitely possible, especially if Foggy follows it up with Dryads. Flute for the Blade Master. Ah, Selsen, so it's not gonna be Wyvern. 
about a Raider game. Yesterday, Focus played a lot of Wyvern. So we kind of have to look out for it. Every now and then. He told me that it was a lot of fun yesterday to play these new maps. And uh, he had fun playing Wyvern as well. He considers it to play it against Undead, so we'll see if that actually happens. Level 2 for the Blade Master, he finds it despite uh, the Demon Hunter being around, who's still at zero experience. Only now the first Huntress are coming in as he has to creep his natural kind of soon. Expansion is finished. And how fast will Focus figure this out? That's the main question. Does he know it? Does he assume it? I don't think he scouted for it, though. Circle it in dust. Will this beastery... Double beastery! Shadowhunter second. This is gonna be a lot of raiders. It still could be Wyvern. But then it, I would definitely question... Ah, here comes the scout. I would definitely question... Um, the cell of the flute, that is a 10% damage boost that you don't want to give away for 200 bucks. A player's forces are under attack. So Grunt sees this. Late Master continues to creep with his two, three Grunt, uh, two Grunts now, and the Beast Master is again there to be the second hero. We see double engine. Oh, engine of law and engine of wind. So mass range probably with dryads and talents. That's a lot of stuff to use, like Fury Fire for reduced armor, slow and damage over time from the Dryads. Very, very hard to keep units alive then. But of course, a little lack of damage. But that's what Orcs have in general, so it shouldn't be the biggest problem. And it's Raiders! Grubby style, early pillage, double Raiders beastery. And against an expansion, that is quite a smart move. He needs additional resources so he can't expand on him, uh, himself. The base or the expansion will... One of them will always be exposed. He can't defend both at the same time. So maybe he splits the raiders away from the rest of the army and does a split push. Which would be quite smart. Hero levels are nice. Creeping up more and more and more. Looks like Focus has Foggy's uh, number today. But maybe the expansion is playing off, and then he can overcome him. The first talent should arrive soon. There we go. He doesn't need master training with this. He doesn't need tier 3 with this. So he uh, saves a lot of resources at that point. Dryads are coming the as well. Forces are under and the shop. The foggy. Level 3 Blade Master after this. Also level 2 Shadow Hunter. He's of course hoping... Oh, a tomb of experience. Exactly for that. Level 2.3 and the Warlord is still there. Level... Oh, he actually needs one more kill. For level 3. But yeah, Foggy going for the mercenary camp. Focus, no Warmill yet, so no Kodo Beasts. And this could result in a creep check, as you see. Still a lot of stuff up for grabs. A Raider is hurt, a Grunt is hurt. Oh, Vamp Aura, it is so nice. And now Ensnares are flying. Heal Wave is rattling through. But the Blade Master is not with the army. This is a good chance for, Foc uh, for Foggy. Focus realizes this using the speed scroll, saving one unit at least. Oh god. Now comes Slow and the Raider is falling. This is so important to have him there. Double level up for the Orc. Three and three, but he's losing more and more. What? Two grunts down. Well played by Foggy. This is the big turnaround in this game. Shadow Hunter in trouble. Has a heal scroll. But does he want to use that for only two heroes? I don't think so. Dryad Slow is very good. Can he follow this up? He doesn't have boots. Also, of course, no TC aura with this. But Raiders are coming, so the Ensnares will help. At least to a degree. Almost a surround there. Oh my god, Blade Master is cutting through the Dryads. But this is a tiny and ridiculously weak army that Focus is throwing at him. Talon is falling, so no more Fury Fire. No more reduced armor. And the expansion is up and running. Foggy salvaged this very good. Despite the double level up and despite the better hero levels, the army was just better and completely caught off guard after this creep. Was a little greedy for him Focus to go for that one that is right in front of Foggy's base. But maybe he can get some revenge with additional Ensnare here. Heal wave again. And the first Huntress is down. Second one will follow. There we go, making sure to lock him down and kill it off. 
these raid of focuses. They are working quite well. Gets another kill. That was the heal scroll that the Shadow Hunter still had, and he's killing so many Huntress. And now the Beastmaster has no TP, can't swap it, he has no staff of oh, Foggy. Overstaying his welcome, stays in this way too long, takes this fight if he, like, didn't really need to go for it. The shop is not helping, and now Focus's army is so dominant with all these end snares. Yeah, that is so hard. Open space. Five raiders, mass and snares, blade master not able to cyclone or disable him at all. And the demon hunter is town portaling home now, but not without losing another huntress. This was almost a double level up again from level three to four. It's bad. It looks really bad. No TP anymore, just the staff, but of course there's end snare lockdown. It takes care of the units first, siege damage against unarmored. It's quite an unfair fight. Misses the crit that would have ended his life, but Hex comes in. Goes to the moon well. It's actually better than I expected, but yeah. Level four on both heroes. He's missing some shots thanks to the uh, to the evasion. But the expansion is not up for long enough to, uh, to get Foggy back in this game. His demon hunter falls and he could even go for the altar. But no, there's a shop, he can heal up, can get some mana back. I really like that development that orcs set up shops in the back so he can easily heal this up. And while Focus is attacking this Tree of Life, he gets resources actually from Pillage, as you can see here. Mass repair coming in, but against that we have mass nets. And this looks like a 30 minute 2-0 so far. Foggy needs a miracle to stay in this tournament. You sent your energy to him before at GCS and it helped but not here! It's a 2-0 and Focus is getting his revenge from yesterday's final where he was defeated 3-0. Now it's 2-0 and the semi-final number one is over with a very very one-sided series. Focus despite being creepjack with double beastery. You get so many raiders that it's not even funny. And then if you just have unarmored units, this was kind of ridiculous. How fast he took out the entire army. That was insanely close. Uh, insanely one-sided. Christmas Neo is so cute. Thank you very much. Maybe I should wear it uh, to parties now as well. That means the second semi-final is coming up. I'm going to send you to a little break to get my production done and uh, play a little commercial here. So guys